Yes, this is an excellent segue into this other story. We, we were initially going to lead with this one. Then yeah. the ju juicy Smolier stuff broke. But check this out. Reuters says Facebook temporarily allows posts on Ukraine war calling for violence against invading Russians or Putin's death. What? That to me is absolutely amazing. They say meta platforms will allow Facebook and Instagram users in some countries to call for violence against Russian and Russian soldiers. Russians and Russian soldiers. So civilians and yeah. soldiers. Yeah. Holy moly. In the context of the Ukraine invasion, what does that mean? What does, does that mean? Does that mean you can be like... I just plain don't like the invasion. And then say, just kill civilians or something. Like That's every Russian should pay. Jeez. Yes. Right. Yep. Until, until when, you know, and that, the thing that I don't understand about all of these sanctions and even just these ideas that you've got to take it out on Russians. And I even saw this video that was circulating of this group in Canada that was um, painting. They were, they were um, vandalizing a Russian community center, you know, with, right. and they were painting all over it, blue and yellow. And it's just, Okay, if if we in the West continue to assert and believe that Vladimir Putin is a dictator and that he isn't that they don't live in a democracy, then why would we take anything out on the people? What what purpose is that? Because you only do it's, that if you think the people are then going to turn around and pressure their government or you're punishing them for voting that government in like they were a democracy and look at the bad choice you people made. Right. But if you don't believe it's a democracy, then what are you doing? Well, so the reason I think this was an excellent segue from the previous uh, uh, segment, Ian was talking about how there could be an executive decree like, okay, now this thing is, is, is not allowed anymore. In this instance, we're seeing what happen, happens when we end up in corporatocracy, where our social discussions, our society is being ruled by technocrats in Silicon Valley who change the rules on a whim. Mark They'll, Zuckerberg, apparently. Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> apparently. They'll say, you can't do these things that are against the rule. And then when they want to enact massive societal change, they'll come out and be like, you are now allowed, peasants. Do as we say. Yeah. That's oh, creepy. And call, that's, yeah, well, I see. Calling for violence against invading Russians. That's so not what it not, says. No, 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 no. Russians and Russian soldiers in the context of Ukraine invasion. What so that as means. As you frame it that way. It depends on what it means. So we're, we'll have to see the exact policy. They say, as a result of the Russian invasion yeah. of Ukraine, we have temporarily made allowances for some for forms of political expression that would normally violate our rules like violent speech, such as, quote, death to Russian invaders. We still won't allow credible calls for violence against Russian civilians. Okay, that's an important okay. distinction. Except who's a Russian invader? Right. The Russian military. What about a guy who's like in Vladivos uh, Vladivostok who's like s chilling on a boat? Mm -hmm. So yeah, now, like the, the guy making the steel like in, in the middle of the country that is getting shipped to make the tanks. You know, he's part of the war machine now, even though he's a civilian, but yeah. they're pretty clear that they don't want to target civilians. But again, the, the, the definition of a civilian is where it gets yeah. really muddy. And that's what's going on even with the war, you know, when they're talking about, oh, these civilians are being killed in Ukraine. And it's like, well, okay, but what do you classify? Who do you classify as a civilian when they're conscripting everybody, giving them a gun, telling them to fight? So if every male 18 to 60 years old is given a weapon and told to go fight, now his civilian Militia. is no longer... But you, you, I think you, they you, might be counting them as civilians. No, no, for sure. War. I agree. But you'd, but you'd have to call them militia. You'd have to say like, you know, Russians kill 12 militia. They're right. not doing that because it's all a big propaganda machine. Sure. This, this, this stuff scares me because it sounds, some people would argue it's reasonable. Oh, but we're talking about war and violence. And I'm like, I don't care. You know, we have two problems here. One, I don't think you should be calling for the death of people. I think you can say, we're being invaded and I will defend myself and defend my country. That I understand. But to be like, I am calling for the death of this group or whatever. The other issue is that the, the rules of our society and what ideas are allowed are being dictated by technocrats who are unelected. Now, that's a scary prospect. You want to claim Vladimir Putin is bad because he's a dictator? I'll be like, sure. What about our, our society being dominated by Facebook and Google? How much industry is digital now? How many people have jobs that are based on YouTube or Facebook or, or Twitter or whatever? And these companies, but my private platforms, they can just eliminate you from your, your entire job, gone in an instant, because they decided it. But do you think they're the ones deciding, or do you think the politicians are pressuring them? Because then it really does become a First Amendment issue when, if they're making policy decisions based on the pressure they're getting from politicians because they're afraid of regulation... I think it's both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my thought too. Both. It just seems like from a platform perspective, you'd want no regulation whatsoever. You'd want just people to say whatever and you wouldn't care because that brings more people to your platform. Yeah, so, so my biggest question is who would be wanting to make it so that you can say this about Russia? Well, well, hold on. Yeah. We have an update. We have, we have news. Answer. 
The, the temporary policy changes on calls to violence, calls for violence to Russian soldiers applies to Armenia, Azerbaijan, Estonia, Georgia, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Romania, Russia, Slova Russia, Slovakia, <laughs> and Ukraine, according to one email. That means if you're a Russian citizen in Russia, you can be calling for the death of your own military. If you are Polish, NATO country, or Lithuania, or Latvia, or Estonia, you can call for death. It's very, very weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zuckerberg for sure wants Ukraine to win the war. I mean, he's why? bought into the propaganda and he's an ideologue. Him. Yeah, I don't think it's Zuckerberg personally. No. I, he owns yeah. like 60% yeah. of the Didn't company. The he makes all the decisions. Didn't we have the Biden administration actively pressuring social media companies to remove vaccine misinformation? Yes. We know that the United States government is above doing this kind of thing. However, I will say to your point asking about uh, whether Zuckerberg could have any motivation to avoid regulation. It's interesting because Facebook has actually been pushing for certain regulations surrounding speech codes online, I think it might actually be advantageous for them in some ways, depending upon what the legislation is, because then people aren't angry with them as a comp for as a company when they ban people and they won't be likely to go to competitors. They'll just see it as a large overarching thing. And then those regulations that Facebook loves to place in its terms of service become policy for the entire country. So small people who might compete with Facebook by having a more free speech platform won't be able to do so. Or they're just trying to get into the China market. That's possible as well. Absolutely. I actually think that's really what's going on with Google, Twitter, and Facebook is they're trying to get into the China market. And they were banned back in 2011. China said, you can't come into our country because you're not willing to censor. And their response was, we're an American company. We have American values. We don't censor. And mm. now that's obviously changed. Yeah. Mm. Censorship. It's here, man. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. Duck, duck, more than fine duck, duck, go announce it. We'll get into that in a little bit. Yes, they I can't just believe that. That is so Why terrible. Would I, that's, that's, yeah, exactly. that's what I use. Yeah, I'm Why would right I now. use Duck, duck, go ever again after this? What's the better it's, search engine? I don't know. Brave, Brave yeah. has their own. Search. Brave's a Brave a oh, it does. Engine? Yeah, they have someone, their own. someone tweeted that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, you know, I want to. We'll, we'll, we'll stay a little bit focused on the on on this because there's a, there's another bit of news related to this. We talked about it with Magic Nuaz. Facebook previously allowed you to praise one Nazi group, the Azov Battalion. So if you were if if you were actively pla praising Nazis on Facebook, so long it was the Ukrainian soldiers, that was allowed. Isn't that crazy? To. You can't praise the swa. They don't. They're afraid of the swastika, but not Nazism. Just the swastika. No, 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 no. Although it's, they have a swastika. It's like that diagonal one. Yeah, it's, and it's like it's half a, a swastika mm -hmm. with the Azov Battalion. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah no, no, but, but Facebook is like, okay, this time it's fine. That's so crazy. That's crazy. The enemy all of my of enemy people, is my friend. All of these people putting the, the Ukrainian flags in their profiles, who just last month were like. We got to fight the fascists are now like, well, these fascists They're are okay. yeah. Magic, That's crazy. When Nawaz was here, he pointed out that what's happening is people from around the world are going to join Azov to yeah. fight. And then they're becoming radicalized and learning how to fight this, this with a terrorist group. And then they're going going to go home radicalized and create mm -hmm. their own little pockets of Azov or Nazism or whatever. That's his fear. He's, I, I guess he's seen it before. I mean, it's not uncommon. It's an interesting saw it with point, ISIS, yeah. too. Well, we already saw this sort of, you know, this is just another proxy war that we're having with Russia right now in Ukraine. And it actually mimics a lot what we did in, um, you know, this is the new Afghanistan. Get out of one war to start another, you know, <laughs> just got to replace the Afghanistan war. And this is very similar to what happened in Afghanistan in the 80s, because what the U.S. government was doing, the Carter administration started it and then it continued on with Reagan was was funding the Mujahideen. Yep. And that they were fighting the Russians because the Russians were with the with the at the time the Afghan government brought in the Russian military to fight and the Mujahideen was fighting against the Russians. We armed the Mujahideen. Yeah. We trained them. We didn't go in. We didn't fight the Russians specifically. We let them do it and they were battling their own country. They were trying to get their own country back from the Soviets, right? Freedom fighters. And we boasted yeah. that we had given Russia their own Vietnam yeah. by Jeez. entangling them, yes, because it was well understood that the Vietnam War was horrible for America, both in terms of foreign policy and domestic policy, right? Because yeah. th this country started to fall apart and there was a lot of cultural turmoil as a result. And so we said, if we could give one of those to Russia, it would sure help hasten the collapse of the USSR. Keep in mind, when you when terrorists work for your com country, they're called freedom fighters. That's when yeah. you well, words. And we saw what happens to the Mujahideen. Al-Qaeda evolves yep. from them, and right. we go over there and fight them. So one of you guys so. was saying that the Azov had been like killing Russians for tens of thousands of Russians over the last five or eight years or something, was it? Like 14,000. Well, 14,000 yeah. people have, have been killed in the Dunbar, in the civil war between the separatists and the Donbass region yes. and, um, and the government. Because, you know, there's an area of Ukraine that has been controlled by these separatists since 2014. And during the civil war conflict, which, you know, we call in the West, we say that they are Russian backed 
um, freedom, you know, Russian backed separatists. Really, they're Ukrainians fighting Ukrainians in a civil war. And there's been 14,000 fatalities there. But a lot of them have been this battalion and these sort of um, very, you know, Nazi. I mean, really, there's no way to say it other than, I mean, these are not like far right. These are actual Nazis. Um, and they have been doing a lot of that, doing a lot of this battle. But, you know, Hillary Clinton even came out like to a week and a half ago. I think and she was giggling about, well, you saw how it worked out in uh, Afghanistan huh. for mm-hmm. the Soviets when, you know, you saw how well that happened because they ultimately had to back out of yeah, that, And then what happened was, was afterward. After that was in the 80s that. in the and mountains. That, now we're talking about flatland in 2020. Well, so but it's, it's still a different. similar thing. We're arming a group. We're giving yes. them a bunch of weapons. This group ideologically is is very, you know, it, it is they're not aligned with really democratic values, Western values, fundamentally. But we're still saying, oh, but you're our friends now because you're fighting our enemy. And that's exactly what happened in the Mujahideen in Afghanistan. And that did not turn out well. Ultimately, we ended up in a war in Afghanistan that we could not win. And we've been in the Middle East this entire time. And so to your point with... We're, you know, then they're recruiting all of these fighters that are coming in from every other European country, and they're very far right radical people that are going to fight alongside these battalions. And yeah, we're arming them, helping them out, and who knows what that will reel into twenty years from now. I mean, how long did it take for the Mujahideen to turn into Al Qaeda? Yeah. And then, you know, all and Taliban. It could very well happen that Ukraine is split. The East goes to the Russia. The West goes to Azov. And we've got a Nazi country, basically. That's, I that's I think, exactly what's going to happen. I don't you, know you if think, it'll go to them specifically. No, yeah, yeah. I think the West will go to NATO, EU. Right. But they'll have then, the, those, the battalion in there. I mean, they'll pretty, be part well, of... Well, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. You know, I, I think when you look at ISIS, it's, it, I'll just say this, my opinion. The West clearly wanted ISIS to function because it was destabilizing Syria. The U.S. wanted Syria to, they wanted the Assad regime to fall so that the U.S. could get their pipeline up to displace the Russian gas monopoly. So ISIS is there and it's like, oh no, oh, we can't stop ISIS, oh geez. And then Trump comes in and he's like, flatten them, wipes ISIS out. That's actually a problem for the West, for, you know, NATO, the U.S. and the CIA, because then what's going to cause Syria to fall? Yeah, Azov. They need another boogeyman. So if the U.S. gets, so right now, the U.S. has uh, Azov. If Russia takes Ukraine, then all of a sudden you might see this rampant, destructive Nazi battalion and the U.S. will be like, oh, this is so, oh, it's so bad. And somehow they'll end up with U.S. trucks and vehicles yeah. and weapons. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, what? oh, we have to fight that rebel group that we funded a while ago. That's so crazy. That's we never happened before. We have to fight before. the Nazis. Oh my I God. Think you, ever, my... you ever see the ISIS, the video of the ISIS guys in the truck and it's got like Jim's plumbing from Detroit, yeah. Michigan on the side yeah. of it or something? <laughs> I think People my are like, favorite... how did that truck get there? There were pictures from Syria that came out that had a kid wearing one of my high school's gym shirts on it because someone had donated oh, their gym shirts and other clothing to some other organization and it ended up in their hands. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to timcast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the Timcast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to timcast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.